a show about having fun in the sun coming up right after this. I'm Alan Smith, welcome to the show. I don't know about you, but I love spending time out in nature. It's so tranquil. In today's show, we're gonna talk about an expansive park system that has water surrounding it. And believe me, there's a little something here for everyone. We'll get to that a little later in the show. Also in today's show, I'll show you how to plant potatoes in a basket, knock out roses and drift roses, as well as prepare some delicious recipes. And I'll answer a viewer question and show you how to decorate a table setting with knockout roses. As you can see, we've got a lot to cover in today's show. But when we come back, we're gonna take a look at Two Rivers Park, so don't go away. Here at the Two Rivers Park, I met up with a friend of mine, the Honorable Judge Buddy the Lions. Now he was elected to office in 1992 and has been there for over 20 years. He's not only a pioneer in the courtroom, he's also well known as the visionary behind the planning and construction of the Big Dam Bridge. This, by the way, is the longest pedestrian bridge in the United States. But he's also very involved in the development of Two Rivers Park, including the community garden plots that are associated with them. You know, buddy, I love coming out here this time of year. There's so much activity and such a great sense of community here. It really is. It's amazing. This, this park has really been discovered. We haven't pushed it, but with the garden plots that have been here for so long, uh, more and more people as we've built a road into it, the interior and uh, built trails, people come out here as families. And these garden plots have been here probably 30 years more, 40 maybe, but very small. But now we've got 605 plots, 450 are rented. Really, it's expanded that much? It's expanded that much. Oh, and that's very heartening. It, uh, and you've got people who've been doing it for 30 years out here, and it's $50 a year. Wow, and then that's that, a bargain. You can oh, think so, about the number of, uh, the, the pounds of vegetables oh, you could grow. <laughs> uh, now, what do you, so the $50, you get your plot of ground, but what else do you get? $50, that goes to pay for the water. It also goes to help pay for the superintendent that kind of overlooks the operation. Uh, we do help in some instances with tilling. And then we've got mulch. If people need mulch for the garden, we've got it. Do you have a plot? No, uh, but uh, my friends out here take care of me uh, on occasion. <laughs> I bet they do. I bet when these vegetables come in, you take home a truckload. Well, no, not that much, <laughs> but uh, we do, they've been really kind to us, uh, not only to me, but the other folks out here working, helping this make, a, make it a good place. After this quick break, we'll head to the farm and I'll show you how to plant some potatoes in a basket. Plus, I'll show you this tablescape with knockout roses, so stay tuned. I have to say, I'm crazy about potatoes. And there's so many different varieties with different subtle flavors. I love them mashed, baked, fried. Who doesn't love french fries? Growing potatoes is easier than you think. This year, we planted nine different varieties of potatoes. I think we planted almost 600 pounds of seed potatoes. And the yield, well, we're not sure yet because we're just now beginning to dig them. But you know, you don't have to have a lot of space to, to grow potatoes. And just about any variety of potato can be grown in a bushel basket like this. It's a great project for kids. And if you just have some old potatoes that you're not going to cook and they're showing some of those eyes, you can drop them in here and you can grow them in a basket. So what I'm gonna do is just show you, these were planted about 14 weeks ago. And this variety is very productive. And look at all the potatoes that are coming off of that. When these were planted, it was just a small piece of potato. So I've got three, four, five, six, looks like six potatoes 
that I grew in this basket with just some loose soil with lots of humus in it that drains well. And that was planted in a bushel basket that had the bottom of it cut out, as you can see here. That's just enough soil to produce a potato from a small piece that has an eye on it or, or within it. And from that eye, you get the growth of the plant and then you get these beautiful potatoes. Now this variety is called Superior White, but you can grow any variety in a bushel basket like this. You wanna plant them early. Um, it, as early as February in the southern parts of the United States, and you'll harvest them in early summer. And the way you know that it's time to harvest is the vines begin to look like this. Just a few months ago, these were beautiful vines uh, with lots of green foliage and white blooms on them. But now that they've begun to die back, it's telling me it's time to get the potatoes out of the ground. Knockout and drift roses aren't just beautiful in the garden, they can jazz up a tabletop as well. Take this tablescape for example. I took these marvelous petite green vases and filled them with mini bouquets of sunny and double knockout roses. Their colors were the perfect complement to these fun polka dot dishes I found at a thrift store. You can also grow knockout roses with rosemary and with a few simple snips, create a fun and colorful centerpiece or arrangement for any place in the home. Just like Knockout, Drift Roses are a big family. They come in seven different varieties. Take Red Drift. It has the most petite flowers of all the Drift Roses. And then there's Pink Drift that reach one and a half feet in height with a three foot spread. Peach Drift is one of my favorites because it's one of the most floriferous dwarf shrubs available and the color is outstanding with so many other plants. And then similar to Peach Drift is Coral Drift, just a deeper coral orange in color, which is very eye-catching in the garden. Some of the newest members of the Drift family include Apricot Drift. You see it exhibits true ground cover habit and offers a fresh new look to the series. And then there's Sweet Drift, which produces clear pink double flowers that appear to float in clusters atop of dark glossy green foliage. And if you love white flowers as much as I do, you're gonna love Icy Drift. It has small pure white double blooms that form from late spring to early summer right into the first hard frost. As you can see, this is a wonderful family of plants and there's one for every garden. We're going to talk about planting knockout roses with drift roses. Then a little later, I'll answer a viewer question and make this delicious recipe. So stay tuned, we'll be back right after the break. If you love color as much as I do, you might want to think about roses for your garden. Not just ordinary roses, but knockout and drifts. And when you plant them together, you can get some beautiful combinations. What's great about them is that these are shrubs that will flower throughout the entire growing season, just like an annual. But what's great about them is this shrub is going to last in your garden for years. Now the reason knockouts and drifts are such good companions, knockouts are large and shrubby, while drift roses are low and spreading. Although they're different in size, they have similar growing requirements, which make them both excellent companions in the garden. You see, both plants prefer full sun and well-drained soil. Plus, they're both self-cleaning in that they drop their petals and sort of clean themselves up. They don't leave a lot of dead blossoms on themselves. You'll find that the knockout family of roses bloom every five to six weeks from spring until the first hard frost, and drift roses bloom continuously during the same time. As you can see, these large plants have just finished one bloom cycle. So what I'm going to do is, once I plant them, I'm gonna cut them back. I'm gonna take off about eight inches of this, fertilize them, water them in, and you won't believe the explosion of color. Give Knockout and Drift a try, you'll be glad you did. You know, herbs aren't just for cooking. There's so many ways you can use them. You know, there's just something refreshing and aromatic about herbs. I like to grow as many varieties as I can, and I'm always looking for ways to extend the season. Take lavender, for instance. It's one of my favorites. There's nothing better than the scent of lavender. 
Lavender is a familiar plant to most of us. It produces a multitude of small fragrant flowers on spiky stems. Now, no matter the type, all lavenders thrive in growing conditions similar to their native habitat along the Mediterranean. They prefer moist, cool winters and hot, dry summers. Well-drained soil and a full day's sun are also essential for robust plants and plenty of blooms. And what I've found is if you cut those blooms at peak, then you can use them to bring inside for dried flower arrangements. And guess what? The lavender plants will bloom again. Now take a look at this little herb. I love this one. This is called boxwood basil. Looks like a tiny little boxwood plant. And if you want it to keep growing and producing these beautiful, aromatic and delicious leaves, just keep cutting it back. You just share it like boxwood and save all those little tips for salads, dressing fresh tomatoes, or any way you might want to use basil in your kitchen. And hey, here's a tip if you love cilantro. You see, it has a short lifespan, so you may want to do successive plantings of it. You see, by doing this, by planting them about every two to three weeks after your initial planting, you'll have plenty of it coming through the season. When you harvest the first set, the second is growing right behind. Now just be sure to keep your soil cool with mulch and harvest often. And you see as cilantro grows, it can bolt like this, putting up flower stalks. And well, the flowers are beautiful. I love to use them in arrangements. Hope these are a few tips that will help you be successful growing some of your own herbs. We're getting ready to make this delicious and refreshing drink, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. I love delicious drinks in the spring when our strawberries start coming in and I have lemons. Well, this is a perfect combination because what this is is a strawberry lemonade recipe. Now what you wanna do is you wanna start with just a simple syrup. And um, I'm gonna light the stove here and I'm gonna add two cups of water, all right? And then I'm adding a cup and a half of sugar, just granulated sugar like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow that just to come to a boil. And while that's going on, I'm going to take one of these lemons and what you want is about a tablespoon of the zest of lemon. Now, I love to grow lemons. I love to grow any kind of citrus tree. You know, they can make great house plants. Um, I keep Myers lemons around and um, they're really good to have in the house, um, but you wanna be careful. You wanna make sure that you spray them because sometimes they can get uh, mealy bugs and spider mites and that, that sort of thing. But using an organic spray, you can keep those little pests at bay. So don't quite have a full tablespoon yet of zest. Just wanna make sure that you get this. It adds a little bit of bite to the drink, which is kind of nice. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is add a cup of lemon juice. It's already heating up nicely here, but what I've done ahead of time is gone ahead and made the same batch here and it's cooled off. So what you wanna do is um, allow this to come to a boil, let it stop, let it cool just as we have here. And then what I'm going to do is take the strawberries, which what we have here is a pint. I've capped these strawberries, split them in half. I'm gonna put them in the food processor here and totally macerate them. We grow several different kinds of strawberries here at the farm. Cardinals are one of my favorites. Ozark Beauty is another one. And what's wonderful about strawberries is they make a beautiful ground cover. So um, under some of our fig trees, I've used them as a ground cover. And they also look good planted under other types of fruit trees, such as our espalier pears and apples. Now you wanna make sure that this gets really juicy. And these are nice juicy berries. And I'm gonna knock a few of these off the top here. Some of these are, the pieces are too big. So I'm gonna push these down in here like this. I mean, just give it another quick whirl because we want these really fine. There we go. That ought to be just about right. Now, what I'm going to do is take this away and what we're ready to do here is take this 
blend of sugar and water and lemon. And I'm gonna pour it through a strainer just to catch some of that pulp. See there? I call it the pulp. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add these lovely strawberries. Just like that. Look at that color. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm gonna set this aside. I wanna make sure I get every bit of strawberry out of there because I love strawberries. Here we go. And then the finishing touch is to take two cups of sparkling water. When you're ready to serve to guests, this will give it just a little bit of fizz and sparkle. And I love to serve this on ice with a touch of fresh mint out of the garden. It's very refreshing. Give it a try. I have to say it's truly inspiring to see these great alleys of trees and the rooms that they surround. You know, they'll just get better over time. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. You know, all the information on today's show can be found on my website. That's pallensmith.com. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. Hey, let's stay in touch. There's so many interesting and beautiful things going on out at the garden home. Just subscribe to my newsletter, pallensmith.com slash e-newsletter slash subscribe. In this garden I dream of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile oh. No, I can't help but smile